Hello, welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and I'm talking with three people on this particular panel. First of all, on my right here, Franz Seisser of Deutsche Telekom. Next to him, Gabriele de Piazza of VMware. And last but by no means least, Marcus Brunner of Swisscom. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for talking to us. Let's begin with this. Um, NFE is getting a bit of a bad press at the moment. For all sorts of reasons, people are saying, well, it's not doing what it should be doing. It's taking longer than we thought it would. It's all very complicated. It's a bit hard. People expected something very quickly from NFV, and when it didn't happen overnight, they seem to be a bit concerned about it. I'm, I put to you, though, that surely NFV is the basic intrinsic building block of 5G. Do you think that's the case, Franz? It is definitely a key building block, no question about that one. And yes, you're right. We are not where we would like to be as an industry. Not sure if it's mainly a technology question. I think it's much more a transformation question because we have a big job still ahead of us and, 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 and progressing and transforming the way we work. Yes, NFV is a key building block of, of 5G. Uh, fortunately, at least, especially for the, for the initial deployments, which we know is non-standalone, so you attach 5G new radio to existing core. Uh, you can very well survive based on existing networks. Obviously, meaning you only uh, also deliver existing use cases, so you go for more speed, more capacity. What is exactly what we see with initial 5G deployments? Once we go to the more advanced features like slicing, having more tailor-made connectivity products, this is where we definitely need to have NFV in place. But that's probably still a, a few more uh, months and, and years out, so this is not something we will see in 2018, 2019 in a fully automated manner. Do you agree with that, Gabriele? Uh, yeah, uh, I think 5G is the, it's a compelling event. Uh, it will push and drive the uh, you know, virtualization aspect of the software definition of the network. Uh, we actually see uh, NFV growing around the world. Um, I think 5G is probably uh, uh, you know, driving some of the transformation of the virtual network function from an application uh, topology perspective, but a lot of the other uh, many carriers around the world are uh, growing capacity, and at this point they are looking at grow capacity in a virtualized way, even to prepare ahead of 5G. Uh, but I agree, I think 5G will introduce uh, new topology from radio to core. Um, will I think we'll actually demand that some of the network application will be re-architected to, uh, to basically fulfill some of the um, you know, some of the promise of 5G could be. Um, therefore, uh, there will be major transformation in the next couple of years. And I think this is not just about one vendor, but it's a whole ecosystem that needs to come together. You know, carrying ecosystem, platform components, um, and, uh, and network vendors as well. So it's, um, it will be a massive, massive transformation. Marcus, coming to you. Well, first of all, what do you make of this, this, this notion that NFE isn't doing what it should do as quickly enough as it should be doing? Yeah, I sort of disagree a bit on that it doesn't do as quickly as possible. Since I was involved from the very start of the NFV movement, I was expecting that it takes some time. On the other hand, it now just comes into the mobile space. I mean, uh, at Swisscom, we have done uh, NFV deployments two, three years ago already in a commercial uh, uh, way. So it's not terribly new, but you don't replace something of in an existing network. And 5G is start migrating the mobile network to a new way of doing things, and there naturally you do it on, on NFV, and there are coming new requirements from the mobile side into it, and from the different businesses and new ways of doing things are coming along. So this is this transformation thing, what Franz was talking about, sort of kicks in at the same time. And it's sort of an enabler, NFV is an enabler. But transformation is always a lengthy process, no matter what you transform to. How far along the transformation process are we, do you think, in general? It, can you, is there a way of measuring it? Do you know where we are along the journey? Anybody? Any, who would like to say? Measure, I don't think you can measure it, even so it's, it's trite. There are several methodologies trying to measure uh, it. At Swisscom, we, we adopted certain uh, uh, agile frameworks. Uh, we applied DevOps for quite some time in certain departments, in others not yet. So I think we're on a good track if you look into the industry, but overall you cannot measure it. And it must fit for purpose as well. You just don't do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I, I see it rather similar. 
transformation is a process. It's not a, a one-stop exercise. So you, you go home today in that world and you come back tomorrow and everything is fundamentally, <laughs> would be nice, a brainwash overnight or something. Uh, it's, it's, it's a process and you need to start somewhere and you need to do it in manageable steps because the most important thing in transformation is your people, your workforce and the mindset. And they don't transform overnight. So you need to step by step develop uh, get in the right direction. Once you know, have that under control, go the next step and, and, and move forward like that. Um, measuring probably a bit difficult, but looking where we want to be, what we always call a full cloud native environment with all these nice passwords, microservices, container, you name it, versus we are today. I think we're still at the very early days regarding that one. But of course, we already have deployed in certain ways more virtualized and cloudified, but still we, we have a lot a long learning curve. We see how things like OpenStack are getting more major release by release in a rather high pace. Now starting more and more into container technologies, but it's still, it's, it's a journey and it will take another few years until we really start to, to work in the, in the, where we believe from today's point of view where we should end up at. Plus don't, don't forget that the business and the network needs to <laughs> need keep on running. Eh? And suppliers, is, suppliers, suppliers need to transform as well. Classical telco suppliers, they don't think in cloud. And honestly, my feeling is they struggle as well to really think cloud native. Yeah. They are developing, but yeah. yeah. No, I agree. No, in fact, a couple of thoughts here. Um, completely agree on the operational transformation. Right? I think we are at the beginning of it. The discussion of what would telco be in the future. I think this is actually a, a great opportunity for a telco to change skin. Not they have to change skin, but eventually to even introduce a new way of uh, thinking services, marketing services, selling services. So on the technology side, I agree. There's a maybe as VMware, we have the luxury of seeing across the telco market, the IT enterprise market, the developers market. So you actually see different markets and maybe the uh, enterprise IT developer market has been transforming a little faster, but uh, let me say, uh, in some cases, those applications are easier and uh, uh, because deploying at scale in the network, it's something that you cannot take as a, uh, as a given. So I think there will be a, a transformation in the telco, but we are the beginning of the journey. And then I agree, even moving towards uh, um, you know, cloud native application or microservices, containers and so forth. Um, it will be a transformation because of a lot of the uh, issues that's been over time solved in the last three to four years in a virtualization or in a cloud uh, you know, uh, virtualization technology. Now they will need to be uh, applied in a, in a different uh, paradigm, which is container or cloud native. And I think there will still be there are still some ways to go. I take it that we're all agreed that 5G couldn't really exist given the expectations of it, never mind anything else, without a virtualized network. Is that the case? Do you, is that what you think? Or could there be some other way of doing it? Yeah. I would, Sorry. Probably, <laughs> probably I would not say virtualized. I think 5G even needs a bit more. I mean, not the radio side, but if the, all the new business development we see, I think needs more cloudification yeah. than, than virtualization. Mm -hmm. And that one is, we have not really done yet, but that's, that's sort of the next step coming from virtualization, going cloud native. I think the IT industry uh, has done the same, the same movement, just a bit earlier, probably a bit quicker, but in general, the trend is also there the same. Yeah, I, agree. I, I would use, again, the word cloudification is better. Uh, softer definition maybe is also important, but in a cloud world, um, I actually think we start to see uh, a component of public cloud on the horizon as well. Uh, maybe it's a little bit forward looking, but we start to see how uh, services might be built and or federated across uh, your private cloud, whether it's telco cloud and some uh, public cloud services, either as an infrastructure or uh, fed in some over the top services. So that will also change uh, even the current thinking of NFV. That's why I would not just use the word virtualization, but cloudification is, is much better, yeah? Great. Yes, cloudification is by far, usually we differentiate between virtualized and cloudified. Yeah. Virtualized, take what you have today and, and move it as good as you can into a data center, knowing there will be always compromises because the system is not designed for cloud in the very beginning, versus do something fundamentally different in 5G, which is fully optimized for cloud deployment. 
And that helps because 5G in the end has two dimensions. The one is highly efficiently deliver ever more bandwidth and ever more capacity. I think there you can go a certain way in a virtualized environment. There are boundaries as well, but this is pretty well understood and they can do quite a bit. The other dimension is, and this is when we come talking about verticals, about slicing and all these type of things where we need to have much more flexibility, much shorter time to market. And these are the things where we strongly believe this only can be de delivered in a, in a cloudified environment. And this is where the full power of, of cloud and, and, and these technologies have to kick in. And if you don't have that, this will be awfully difficult to do it in a cost-efficient manner. Fully agree with you, Franz, on that. Have some agreement? That's good. Well, you all seem to be agreeing. Let's move on to other technologies. What other prerequisite technologies do you think are required for 5G? Okay, there's a degree of virtualization, there's cloudification, as we've been discussing. What about other technologies? Are there any, and what are they? Gabriele, what do you think? Uh, I think the, uh, the way of thinking, uh, networking at the core, will be uh, very important um, because you know we talk about cloudification, we talk about software definition. Let's uh, remind that uh, I think the aspect of virtual networking or software defined networking is at the core of how you actually manage distributed applications in this world. So in this uh, new you know, 5G architecture, so I think it's a, it's a core technology. And of course, I actually think there will be a change across the board. So of course, we talked about radio, about core, uh, there will be an impact of how core network is built and or architected and implemented and distributed and managed and orchestrated and automated. So I think the whole automation aspect is another component that we start to see. And I'm, I've seen a, a major change in the industry from a lot of talks about the orchestration, there's been a lot of orchestration term, now really moving towards automation because it's more than orchestration, it's really about uh, you know, uh, placing an application, understanding where, how, was the best way of doing it and moving it uh, uh, potentially to multiple locations. So it's more than orchestration, it's really about automation. Probably, probably orchestration, it's still orchestration, yeah. but I think the, what changes it, it's going to be much more end-to-end. So, I mean, so far in NFV, we, we talked orchestration about the sort of a certain place. Yeah. Now it moves into edge, into uh, customer premises. Uh, you have orchestration, you have multi-tenancy in orchestration, yeah. eventually. You have on-prem, off-prem type of hybrid uh, uh, settings where you need to go across. All of that is, is, is not there yet. So that sort of technology I think we need. Then on the, what I would love to see is a bit more uh, IT and network virtualization of cloudification and a sort of an integration or even a, a merger of those two would, would be cool because I don't see, I personally don't see really the difference of the different workloads. Mm. They are naturally, there's sort of certain application characteristics yeah. which are different, but the platform should be capable of running all of that on the same platform. Uh, we, need, we need two developments on top. One is on top, so this is there is no reason to separate that strictly between what we today call OSS and network. Much bigger gray zone coming together. A very important technology which we still need to embrace is API first. So everything has to be done via APIs, via software technologies, not via nice old point-to-point -point protocols. This is what we need to really push and people who look at it, they know this is one of the key criteria when Amazon started very early with, with their, there was a key paradigm, API first, you do everything as an API. So that's on the, on the top. And on the bottom, we also must not forget the connectivity network, the aggregation networks. Also, they need to be uh, fully automated and, and, and controlled by software. And this is where we still see quite some weaknesses today. Because this whole virtualization cloud comes from the, from the enterprise IT industry they don't care that much about networking classically. Yeah? So there is still, we need to be very careful and understand that we can deliver the bandwidth cost efficiently, can control all the required connectivities securely, separate uh, traffic from each other, and manage it also fully automatically end-to-end -end together with the functional pieces of the system. Work on the API, yeah, for me, for me that's part of the cloudification. I mean, cloudification, cloud native means you have APIs on your components and you stitch the different components together through APIs. So it's sort of a, a given for me. Now the yeah. question is <laughs> at the moment based on how open these APIs are, and this is sort of a bit of an industry discussion. Yeah. The, the open here. is probably the point I missed. Mean, <laughs> yes, it has to be open APIs, not proprietary. Yes, I agree. And it's interesting for me to see these two worlds coming together. So you mentioned before 
uh, that uh, vendors coming from the uh, telecom world, the network equipment world, they need to think more cloud. I also, I like to say vendors coming from the IT and cloud side, they also need to understand the telco requirements better. So it's, uh, it's both ways. Um, uh, but I do agree that uh, you need uh, all of the above. In fact, we, we talked a lot about uh, you know, cloud, cloudification, virtualization, but you've, you mentioned one word, OSS. OSS will also undergo a major transformation. Uh, you know, if you look at building a slice in real time and deliver a specific quality of service, how do you assure that? How do you deliver certain components? So uh, it gets more complicated uh, uh, in terms of the end-to-end, -end, as you said, uh, the end-to-end -end provisioning of all the service. Thank you. We're running out of time, so I wanted to make this one, this last one, fairly brief. So just be aware that we are we are pushing it a bit. Um, of course, in the end, CSPs are in this to make money. When do you think CSPs are going to harvest the return on investment of their, on their 5G investment? When are they going to make money out of it? And where is it going to come from first? Enterprise, consumer? What do you think, France? I think we know that there is not too much additional money on the consumer side. The consumer side is all about efficiency, capacity, because knowing what's coming on AR, VR, all these bandwidth-hungry applications, you need to deliver on the same amount of money people are spending more. more. I think the, the, the chance to really open up new channel, uh, new revenue channels is, is, is on the B2B vertical, B2B2C network as a service, so to say, area where you really provide something tailor-made to your, to your customer that he can deliver his product much better and more flexibly. Thank you, Gabriele. Yeah, I um, agree. B2B, uh, critical communications, machine-to-machine -machine communication, IoT. Uh, the other question is, can you really avoid moving to 5G? If you look at the history of 3G to 4 to 5G, so you know, it's, uh, it's like when in a world of media you can say, can you, should I or should I not do over the top and, and deliver? So I think we are in this debate right now, but uh, I think it's inevitable that uh, it will more like how you do it and how you can reap the benefits as opposed to uh, if and you know why. Yeah, I would disagree that there's not more money in consumer space either. So with a new technology, there will be new innovation coming along. Probably don't even know about it. I'm seeing cameras, you just plug it with a battery at the wall and leave it there, talking with, with 5G networks. And it's, a, it's an additional device. It's not massive ARP you're going to generate with that type of application, but it's add-on add -on, uh, money. I don't see why not. On the B2B side, I, I fully agree. Probably one word on the B2B side, I mean, the, the 5G network part as such should be able to replace also some other networking technology to be a more, even more general purpose platform that specifically in the uh, mission critical space, uh, broadcasting space, and so on and so forth. I think there is sort of, there's sort of business flowing more on the 5G network than uh, going out. So it's, I think there's a certain consolidation onto 5G, I hope at least. Okay, well, gentlemen, fascinating stuff. Thank you very much indeed. All right. Thank you. Thank you.